Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of an incredible talk show brought to you by the Indian Football Portal. Today we have with us a legendary player and coach who has played for India and coached various teams like East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, Mohammedan, Salgaukar and Churchill Brothers. He is a winner of the highest order, who has won I-League, NFL, Kolkata, Kolkata Football League, Durant Cup, IFA Shield and memorable LG Asian Cup. I am glad to present to you Mr. Subhash Bhaumik. Good morning sir, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? All this good, sir. Of pandemic is difficult to be good. But yeah, so as a coach, it's extremely yes. difficult in this pandemic. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Ryan, over to you. Really, really delighted today to be able to interview Mr. Subhash Bhomik, someone I looked up to when I was a player. My fond memories are that whenever he took over a team, that team ended up winning something. So it gives me real pleasure, real joy to be interacting with Mr. Bhomik. So, uh, Bhomik sir, just to start this off, we all know you as uh, Subhash Bhomik, the coach. But let's just try, a, try and look a bit at the legendary Subhash Bhomik, the player who played as a striker for the Indian national team as well as a right winger on occasions. So, your career started in 1969 with East Bengal. You played for both the Kolkata Giants, East Bengal and Mohan Bagan, and you were a key player for the Indian national team. Uh, you were you were known for your goal scoring ability. What was your journey like as a player? It was fantastic. Uh, I came from an official town of Bengal. I came to Kolkata uh, to pursue my football career, and I was very lucky. Uh, after reaching Kolkata, I was a schoolboy. Um, the, the, those days, there used to be a <coughs> very big football tournament in school level. That's called All Bengal Inter District Championship. I came, I joined, uh, and I got chance. And I became I just the best player of that year, 1966. Uh, and the judges were the great players from Veterans Club like Pujesh Chakraborty, uh, Omaputi Kumar, Bhagash Hom. Uh, and after that, I did not look back. I, I, I was selected for Junior Bengal National. Then I came back and signed for Sporting Union Club because we then, uh, President of AFF, Mr. M. Dattara, was the President of Sporting. He called me and asked me to sign. And then I mean, never looked back. Next year, I signed for Rajasthan, though I have got an offer from East Bengal, but I felt that I am not ready to sign for a big club. So one more year, I should prepare myself. Uh, and 69, I signed for East Bengal. And then um, it was a great journey. If, just now you told that people remember me as a coach, but I would love to be remembered as a footballer, because I cannot forget the 1970 Asian Games when the team won the bronze. A um, little bit of judiciousness from our team management, the team could have played in final. And don't forget uh, the Indian team bet with Japan. With Japan in 68, that Japan team won the bronze medal in Mexico Olympic, consisting of Kamamoto, Miyamoto, all those great footballers. So that was a great, great uh, feeling feel I cherish in my life. It's really nice. There are some fond memories you, you have, fond memories people who used to watch football at that time had, and you are definitely a special player for the national team. Now, as a coach, you're one of the few who has won whatever there is to win. So you have won your your uh, career truly took off in 2002 with East Bengal. You won back-to-back -back NFL titles. You won the Kolkata Football League. You won the Durant Cup, the IFA Shield. You won the very very memorable LG Asian Cup. And few Asia. years later, this is not the Asian Cup. It's the Asian Cup. And next year, East Bengal won another international tournament in Nepal beating a Korean side, uh, St. Miguel tournament, the Korean team beat Indian national team two months before in Vietnam. 
So that was also because on only because of Asian Cup, uh, people forgot about it. Uh, that tournament was also very uh, so dear to my heart. Two international tournaments, yes, and you have also gone on to win the I League with Churchill Brothers many years later. So now at senior level, winning is most important in a coach's record, and you are truly an expert at that. What is the secret to your success? How do you make teams win? I I I was very lucky. I got some fantastic players whom I choose personally, uh, uh, requesting the clubs anywhere I coached. If you look into uh, Mohan Bagan's I League Championship that year, also I picked up the players whom Mohan Bagan supporters never heard the name, like Shanat Singh. I brought to Calcutta. Vikram Jit Singh. I, I I got Pierre Boa. Uh, no one knew his name. So, but unfortunately, misunderstanding between one official and me, uh, I had to leave. That team became champion. Uh, so uh, I was very lucky that I got uh, certain players, all uh, everyone. Uh, uh, they are very near and dear to my heart. Uh, anything I was very uh, strict uh, during training session. I never used to spare anyone. Um, it may so happen that sometimes I, I bit someone. Uh, Shouting at them at the same time. They are like my children to me. They are not like children. They were my children. Because that was my philosophy that players are your strength. They are your weakness. They are your strength. If you uh, combine them, if you can bring them together, they can do anything. And they did it. Uh, I got some uh, Badin Musa. Musa was uh, before jo I joined East Bengal. Musa was there. But after that, I got Douglas. I got Mike Okoro. Uh, so on and on. And some fantastic Indian players. So I was very lucky, I must say. Uh, there are misunderstanding. There are misunderstanding. They misunderstood me. But it was my job to get them, get them out of that misunderstanding. Mis 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 uh, so really modest of you, modest of you to say it's your lucky, no, there's, no, definitely, no. there's definitely talent, which is why a team wins. But now you have won in 2002 and then 10 years later, you again won in 2012, this time with Churchill Brothers. Now that is a 10 year gap, which means a big generation gap. So. Was there any difference in the nature of the players, the personality of the players? Did you have to deal with them differently at that time and then at Churchill Brothers? What was your no, management? Because I, never, because I never went out of football. I always, I was still now, I'm not coaching, but I'm keeping track with the modern football. I do study, I uh, keep on track that uh, what is going on around you, especially with football. Like in Churchill Brothers, uh, very difficult, I'm telling to coach Churchill Brothers because here is the one, Mon Bagan is a, a public team. But in Churchill Brothers, the one-man show. And that one man is very, very, very... Uh, one of the finest football lovers I have come across. But there's a saying that the kings see through their ears. So he used to get mis misguided when um, his psychopaths used to be with him, tell him something. He, uh, he used to put lots of pressure. I have not faced that kind of pressure even in big clubs. But that was a family club. The people of that club, that family, a wonderful family, the first year when I went in 2011, the team was uh, fighting relegation. I, from there, I got, got them to number three position. And next year, Mr. Churchill was go going to London. He told me, Coach, 
Now I've got confidence in you. You build up the team. You gave me a budget. According to that budget, I picked up Indian players. I picked up foreigners. Like one foreigner I got uh, from Lebanon. Uh, India has not... The ISL stoppers are playing. He's, if not better, Mr. Bilal Najeri. He came, but, uh, but in between the league, he left us because he got a big, big offer from Dubai. And his contract, I did not make. There was a flaw, and he took that advantage. And that team also is a great team. They, uh, they, there was Beto, there was Henry, there was Daniel Franco. Then I got took Sandeep Nandi from Calcutta to there. That team was also... There are some great players, like Raju, Karan Singh. So, very play. And it gives me immense pleasure that living in Calcutta, settling down in Goa, and living in I League, national I League, sorry, from there, uh, I think this is a, uh, to me, uh, it, it gives me a lot of pleasure. So was it any different managing this group that you mentioned compared to managing, let's say, Mike Okoro, Douglas, Bhai Chung, Surkumar and that group? There was a little bit of uh, uh, difference in the class. Like in Churchill, I did not have a player like Bhai Chung. I did not have any Alvito Dikuna. Mike Okoro is all-time Indian striker who has played as an intelligent Player, Douglas, they are great names, Surkumar. Uh, but with that bunch of players of Chachi, like Lenny was an upcoming boy. I took a lot of care for him. Angel Franco uh, was there. So there are some good young players. So too, we worked hard. The boys, really worked hard and in between when Bilal and Akram left Churchill, we are in uh, trouble. But luckily, Sumil Chetri came back from Portugal at that at that juncture. So we got him signed. Uh, mm, and team he worked as a unit. So that's why before one match, the church will become champion. Okay. And uh, Novi Kapadia mentions in his book, Barefoot to Boots, he mentioned that you created a family-like atmosphere in your teams and ensured your players got the best treatment. How would you describe your coaching and management style? See, to be a good coach, first you have to have football knowledge, that this guy could this, uh, assess your team individually, collectively, and ultimately. If you want to be a good teacher, not coach, then you have to treat your student like you are part of your family. That uh, when they need you, at, at 2 o'clock at night, they should feel that there is a one person if I call him, he will come. And the same person knows that tomorrow morning, if I don't give my 100%, I'm going to get a big stick from him. So that I learned from someone, his name is Peter Banerjee. He's no more here. So I don't have license, but what I've learned through him is more than the, these professional license holders. I'm giving you a small example. Last ISL, SC Bengal was not doing well. The famous Bobby Fowler, he's famous in Liverpool, he's a legend of Liverpool. He commented that Indian players does not, did not get their coaching right. It makes your players demoralized. The coach should not. If you want to criticize your player, call him. Lock the door, 
no third person should be there, hammer them and make them realize that they are doing mistakes. But don't praise them openly. The moment you uh, praise them, uh, sometimes they lose their head. I still remember Dimak Mandel once, after winning the Asian Cup, he came to my room. The day I praise you openly, that day you will stop your progress. So this is, I learned through reading Sir Ferguson and Boozby, reading their books, to Van Quare, a man uh, who first uh, told people, told the football world, that if you juggle the ball for a thousand times, you, may, you are not a good footballer. You go and join a circus, good juggler. But the moment the ball comes to your feet, if you can see the whole ground, then to me you are a good player. So you see, he's teaching has been picked up by so many coaches, so many successful coaches, like Ted Guardiola, Henry K, the guy called the Dutch. So they spread that spirit. So Nogi is a good friend of mine. He was kind enough to talk about good things about me. But the thing is this, and I was very strict at the same time and a very soft corner for my players. Not only the players, players' family also knew that any problem they could directly contact me. I used to control my few players through their girlfriends or their wives. I used to call them because I used to have their number. He is not doing this thing, please make him uh, bring him to right nature. Or you please now don't give too much of time to him because I need his time more. So this help, this this kind of uh, attitude helps me. Got it. And uh, in the process, you have worked with some of India's top players, some of the very best in India. Are there, and, and this includes Indians as well as foreigners who you have coached, is there any one of certain few players in particular who you really enjoyed working with? No, certainly. Like Bilal Narjil, Mike Kokoro, Douglas, Bhaisin Bhutia. My only Sunil Chetri, that seven, eight matches he played in uh, for Churchill, uh, he gave his 100 percent. So I, I, that's, I should told you now that I was a bit lucky that I got some fantastic players who not everyone uh, followed uh, my rules like they follow by them. But I, I could make them. Uh, still, I got connect. Like three days back, I got a WhatsApp uh, from Benjamin Franco. Where is he in Goa? I'm in Kolkata, no touch. Sometimes I get calls from my Kokoro. He's now in. The United States. So all players, they call me. So that's why that's why I'm very lucky. I I think that I'm blessed in this respect. And uh, you have been an icon in the I League. Now, right now, the ISL has become the top league in the country. How much do you think ISL has had an influence on making Indian football better, if at all? <laughs> Oh, sure, they could. But uh, like if you look back, when it started, uh, the motto of the ISL, uh, SSDL, uh, or the franchises, like being those old players who have lived football, or the, the Vaja of living football, just to sell their name. But that did not uh, satisfy uh, football students like me who want to see. But last year, or year before that, the players 
no one coming, not with big names, but with some big uh, football quality. And last year, after Mon Mohan Spangal joined the Bangalore and uh, football, this is pinnacle. Huh? If, if you look, if you look into the viewership, last six years they did not get that up here kind of viewership what they got last year. But my only mm, complaint about these leagues, like two days back when the 16th Super League was coming and ultimately 18, so Ted Guardiola gave a statement. The league, which does not have any relegation, cannot be uh, uh, compared as a good football league. So FSGL should now start the relegation and promotion that I League champion should come and, like last year, Udisha, you see. Uh, they they're happy. They're out of 11, they're, they're getting the 11th place. They're, they're, there's no you know, the, uh, pressure on, on to them. Uh, so this should be introduced. And what, uh, I think they have done it already. They have uh, reduced a player uh, in numbering foreign players. Yes. And the biggest problem is this, like two days back, Three days back, on third, we, our national team played in uh, Qatar. Uh, our biggest problem is human body. If you look at the human body, this part is your spinal cord. Here is the head. The spinal cord is the strength of human body. In the strength and fourth and fifth vertebra, 18th and 19th vertebra, and 34th and 31st vertebra. I wanted to mean the central defense, central midfield, and striking zone. You will see all the franchises are there getting the foreigners. A rule should be made that you have to one central defender Indian, one central midfielder Indian, and striker should, should be Indian. Then only the Indian national team will be benefited. Great point. Great point. Now, uh, you have... You're a legend in the Maidan football. So in oh, football. I'm not a legend. I'm, I'm a footballer. Uh, I was very really hardworking. My first touch was very bad when I came and joined the bandwagon. But with the blessing of and guidance of Mr. Jesse Gu and P.K. Banerjee, I have groomed. Uh, but through sheer hard work, God has given me something which is which can be called an achievement. So I was not a great footballer. Uh, there are many, many great footballers. In my days, I used to, I used to play with them, like Sujit Garmaka, Mahmoud Habib, Indar Singh. They were real, real. They were real. I'm really humble and modest again for you to say that. But okay, let me <laughs> let me rephrase it. You have been one of the most successful people in Kolkata football. Now, uh, Kolkata football brings with it a lot of pressure as a coach. So you have got pressure for, from the management. You have got pressure from the fans. And obviously, whichever coach has coached in Kolkata, they know that the fans are not very kind when the things are not going their way. They are going to throw shoes. They are going to give the choices of words. They are going to write whatever they want. Now, you already have pressure of making the team win. How do you handle this fan pressure as well? Yeah, I never took it, I thought it as a pressure. Because when I started playing football, I, I saw that those in my younger days, that if you cannot win the match, the pressure, so-called pressure, the gullies, the bad languages, stones. And when I came into coaching, to me, that was not a pressure. To me, what is pressure? What Professor Varino once said, pressure is a man in the morning when he gets out of his house to earn some money so that he can be in the evening he can bring back with something for his family to feed. That is called pressure. And here, I used to enjoy this. I, to, I knew that uh, if you get into all these things, 
you will be jeopardized in your thoughts i never want to jeopardize my thoughts i want to be focused on my thoughts because i experience the moment you get out of your focus you will lose your chance so this uh, focal pressure this uh, and so called journalism journalists i'm sorry uh, uh, they are part uh, they their likings and dislikings uh, are very strong and they, don't do it i should tell my dear don't read the paper don't read sports channel but see the sports channel the uh, international channel learn how he dribbling how how he seeing at the ground how he, the like what one said in vancouver if you can see the ground space how the space is being created try to learn don't listen what someone is saying what someone is writing that's great advice so this interview has been a great my uh, gold mine for all the ambitious coaches that are around there has already been so many great piece of advice you have given but to if you are to specifically say if you are to give advice about if all the young coaches want to know how they should reach a level that you have reached how should they be successful at coaching what would you advise them first thing burning desire we have to have a very very strong burning desire that i have to do it so i don't have license but i have to do it i have to learn it. second if you are training coaching the young stars don't try to be their coach be their teacher like uh, montessori school this is a r says a says a b says b so be with them let the touches technically let them be very strong don't make them runners in our country we are all producing runners if you go to uh, 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 i this academy to me this is not academy we don't have the idea what is academy what actually an academy should be so these are coaching center this coaching center if you go without unnoticed you go you will see the coaches are saying if someone is dribbling hey, why you are leaving no not leaving the ball Lift the ball, lift the ball. I, if I cannot dribble to person, and how I am going to do my war? The war is between ten versus ten because two goalkeepers are if you nullify them. So if I win my opponent by dribbling and beating him, then my team is getting ten versus nine. But when you come to big professional coaching, you have to be very. Uh, but i said very patient that be patient you have to have a full fitness yes. because you get 25 26 individuals you have to make them together that 25 26 individuals brilliance have to be accumulated and make a good team like a girl and boy he picks up flowers from a garden different kind of flowers red yellow white blue he is a good gardener who knows how to make <coughs> the girl and beautiful looking nice how to use the colors how... so a good coach will do that a good coach will do that okay and this was a fantastic interview now before we will conclude with one last question and a question that i'm sure a lot of people will be very very inquisitive to know what is what are the next plans for the near future for mr subhash bhamik no i'm not enjoying my uh, look ram when i was young my school teachers others they used to uh is my parents that he very clear he want anything he reads once he can remember memorize he can do it but 
he's all through the day, he's running about football. Uh, the, the sports, those days, there's a sport, magazine, sports magazine, sports and pastime. I used to have always all those copies, I used to cut the pictures. Still now, at the age of 72, I have not stopped my dad hunting, new things, what is coming. Like that great impression when he came into uh, football, I wanted to know why, why this guy called Yugen Top is getting so much success. Then I came to know about Gagan pressing. And so far we know pressing. That moment you lose the ball, you press the opponent. And Gagan pressing, Yugen Top is saying, when you have the ball under your control, under your position, you start your counter attack, counter pressing. How? Now maintain your shape that if the right finger is wide, the right back will be inverted side back. If I lose the ball, then my space are... So I am learning. Every day I learn. I, I become a member of like Leeds United, Manchester City. Uh, I get the information, the new Anything it comes, I get the videos in my phone. I see it. I transfer it to my uh, computer, and I, 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 I'm enjoying. It. I'm enjoying. It. So there's one thing that uh, one very special thing that you forgot to mention that your passion is live even is still alive after so many years because you had spent around 30, uh, 350 pounds mm -hmm. if I am not mistaken to watch Manchester City I, play live. I tell Almighty, please, before you take out, take away my uh, passion for football, you please take me out from this world. Because football is the last thing I want to Enjoy and take in the name of God, I will do a good bye. It's really nice. Uh, Mr. Bhamek, it was fantastic, sir. It was really, really a enlightening interview. Pleasure. It's my pleasure. I enjoyed it a lot and I hope that we can have more similar talks whenever you are free. It's time just flies. Yes. My uh, Aches, would you like to do the conclusion? Thanks a lot for your valuable time, Mr. Bhamek. I'm sure no if, like me will uh, implement your advice and reach the next level. It will be a matter of history lesson for young football fans watching this video and a moment of nostalgia for the old ones. So thanks a lot for your time. And I would also like to thank Ran Roy Shah for conducting this amazing interview. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Ryan.